How can you make your partner go wild in bed? I'm Dr. Rina Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. And today I'm going to give you science-based tools to help make the next time you have sex even better. And no, it's not one specific move or position. It's about learning the areas of the body that turn you and your partner on, the erogenous zones. And how do you stimulate those areas most effectively? Now, erogenous zones are areas of the body that are particularly sensitive to sensual or sexual touch. In this video, we'll dive into the science behind those zones and explore what research has uncovered about how our brains perceive and respond to touch in these areas. Erogenous zones are not just limited to the genitals, but they can include other areas like the neck, the nipples, the inner thighs, and even for some people, the feet. Now, researchers have found that the whole body can actually serve as what we call a somatosensory sexual organ with the potential to trigger arousal when touched, especially during sex with a partner. Now, why are some areas of the body more sensitive and pleasurable than others? It has to do with how the brain processes and interprets sensory information from the skin. Now, the brain has a specialized map of the body surface, which is called the somatosensory cortex, which people used to think explained all of it. The fingers, toes, lips, etc., are located near the genitals on the cortex, so assuming these areas can be pleasurable. But... It's actually not quite that simple. Newer research suggests that erogenous zones may be represented other places in the brain in areas like the insular cortex, and these are specifically involved in processing emotional and subjective aspects of touch. So it's not just what you're touching, but who's doing it and how they're doing it. Studies have mapped out the most common erogenous zones on the body. For both men and women, areas like the genitals, obviously, mouth, lips, ears, breasts or nipples, inner thighs, buttocks, and neck tend to be highly erogenous. For men, the perineum or the area between the scrotum and the anus, and for women, the lower back was also high on the list. Interestingly, for both genders, feet were surprisingly low on the list, and 75% of people in this study of 800 people didn't find it desirable at all. And at the bottom of the list were things like elbows, chins, and shins. Now, generally, women tend to report these zones being more intense than men, but both men and women tend to find the same areas relatively stimulating. The other interesting thing about these areas is that they're pretty consistent across a diverse group of people. So things like cultural background, age, sexual orientation, or race didn't seem to affect how arousing certain areas of the body were. Another study found that the entire body, except for areas of the lower legs and parts of the hands, were capable of triggering sexual arousal when touched by a partner. Now, on average, 24% of the total body area, about a fourth of the body, is capable of triggering sexual arousal. Now, obviously, guys, the genitals are arousing, but another study wanted to figure out what particular areas of the female genitals created the most arousal. Now, for those of you who've been with me for a while, this won't shock you at all. The most important erogenous zone is the clitoris. And for those who are new here, the clitoris is the homologue of the penis, which means it's embryologically and anatomically identical to the penis. It has the same erectile tissue and same structure. It's just located mostly internally. Now, the next most common erogenous zone was the vaginal opening. Now, this makes sense. A lot of people don't know this, but the distal third of the vagina has most of the nerve endings of the vagina. And so that's going to be more stimulating than stimulating deeper into the vaginal canal. And then this was followed by the superficial anterior wall. And that's where the skein's glands or the female prostate is located. And there's also extra nerve endings there. And the clitoral shaft is nearby. And this is what's called the G zone. So this obviously is an area that many people find arousing because of this confluence of structures and nerve endings. And if you want to learn more about the G zone or what people famously call the G spot, make sure to check out my video where I talk all about that. The last area that women found most arousing is near the urethral opening. And that's actually an area called the vestibule. And that is, has a lot of nerve endings in that area that can be pleasurable as well. 
Now, what all of you want to know is what is the magic touch? How do you exactly stimulate these erogenous zones to have the most arousal or the best sex ever? Now, a 2018 study tried to figure this out. They recruited 19 romantic couples and one partner of the couple was assigned to be the giver and the other was the receiver. And givers were instructed to give two types of touch, either slow stroking at around three centimeters per second or fast stroking around 18 centimeters per second stuck into the neck, which is considered an erogenous zone, and the forehead, which is a non-erogenous zone. And they found that slow stroking touch on the erogenous zone was significantly more pleasurable than the faster touch or touching the non-erogenous zone. Now, why does this make sense? The human body has a specialized nerve fibers. They are called C tactile afferents, and they help the brain differentiate a more gentle dynamic touch. And they respond best to a gentle stroking touch applied at a specific velocity of one to 10 10 centimeters per second. And this is like the typical speed that people use when they're caressing or stroking a person that they want to be intimate with. And in particular, this CT optimal touch, which they called activates the brain regions that are involved in processing emotions and feelings. And so now you're creating this neural pathway that perceives certain types of touch as pleasant and even erotic. And this might be an important mechanism by which Humans can differentiate between emotional and erotic touch and understand erotic meaning in social interactions. What I want you to take away from this is take time to find out your and your partner's erogenous zones and use them to enhance sex. Use slow, gentle strokes to optimize stimulation of those specialized nerve endings. And most importantly, communicate with your partner and be open to suggestions or trying new things. Better sex means overall better health. And I can't say this enough. People think sex is just for fun. And yes, absolutely. It's fun. It's amazing. It makes you feel good. There's so many indications that being able to have good sex with a partner leads to better health outcomes and maybe even living a longer life. If you want to learn more about that, make sure to check out my video on how sex might save your life. But ultimately, make it a priority. Take time. Enjoy pleasure. It is not a race to the finish line. And I can promise you that the end product will be well worth it. I know, guys, that only 20% of you who watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you guys like this content and want to learn more about your body, about your health, make sure to subscribe and show your support. It is a free, zero-cost way to support. And as always, I'm going to take care of yourself because you are worth it.